Hi there, homeschool moms and dads. So today I want to kind of do a brain dump on what we've been doing for the past few months on language arts. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that language arts, reading, writing, all of that is kind of like our most troublesome subject um, with our daughter who is eight years old, turning nine in a couple months. So, given that and given our family history. Oh. All right, hopefully the creepy Halloween vibes from that weird light bulb are over. Um, but anyways, I was talking about um, language arts. It's our most troublesome subject. And what are we doing? So to give you a recap, um, we started off language arts with um, Calvert homeschool because we started that like first like kindergarten year with a box curriculum right the way a lot of homeschoolers do <laughs> their very first year they start with a box curriculum when they're like scared and don't know what to do um and some people do it f for you know 18 years so good on them so we started with that and then we moved on to the good and the beautiful and we did level k level one and about half of level two before we just kind of got really frustrated and decided this isn't working for us. In addition to that, we did a lot of like um, leveled readers. So we did the scholastic level reader box um, that went like A through D or something. And then it we continued up and up and up and up and up until they got out of alphabet and into numbers. <laughs> Um, and all of those things and reading, she would, she would progress through it, but it was still always a struggle and every single word was going to need to be, um, sounded out and it's going to do that. I don't know why that light bulb is doing that. Hold on. I have unscrewed the creepy light bulb. So hopefully things will be better now. A little bit darker, but better. Um, so we did the good and beautiful level did we do k yeah we did k one and most of two half of two um and then just decided hey this isn't working for us we're not remembering what we're supposed to be learning in this um i found the structure of it incredibly confusing um i couldn't tell why they were teaching one thing at one time and then moving on to something else. Um, I didn't feel like there was a lot of, I don't know, accountability built into it. It was just like, here are your spelling words, learn these. And we'd do them and she wouldn't. And then we'd move on because that was the next lesson and we just need to do a lesson that day. Um, and, and I know there are parents that like stop and they like drill and drill and drill and drill and drill until it would work. But I also know my own history with spelling and it was never gonna work, so why? Anyways, um, I got a lot of pressure um, from other folks to, because of the dyslexia thing, do um, all about reading. And I was very resistant because of the price tag um, and because someone was telling me to do it, honestly. <laughs> But I went ahead and got it. And at first I got level three. Level three looked like it was a little bit too high. So we went down to level two and we've been loving it. So we're already like almost halfway through this thing. Um, and they're huge. So like they're giant books. And one of them is the teacher's manual and the other is the student worksheets. So what I like about them is they have a lot of these little games. And yes, even my eight-year-old for some reason finds reading more tolerable if it's in the format of a silly game. And she still knows, it, like it's still just read these words. So I don't know why putting it in game form makes it better, but it does. Um, and they have things that like she's passed, like little flip books and things like that. But um, yeah, so we've been doing that. 
and she's been really loving it. What I've been doing with it is I haven't been um, breaking down the cards until we've done them. And before that, I've been keeping them just in a folder. And then because there's like almost nothing consumable about this product, um, other than you have to cut things out, when we do one of the little games, I've been cutting them out and putting them in page protectors just so I can save them. I, I don't know if my son will use this at all, but if we decide that we want to use it again, we have it to use again, so that's exciting. Now, before we moved over to All About Reading, we took a break. And we've done this before with language arts. Oh, their readers are also really good. Okay, I'll go into that for a second. Look how cute their readers are. They're like not that intimidating. The stories are pretty long, but they don't have too many words on a page on any individual page, so that's pretty good. I will say that my daughter's biggest negative are what they call like their fluency pages. Ugh. Which are like full pages of words. Um, so she finds that really intimidating and dislikes those. Um, I end up doing things like rewriting them on what dry erase boards or um, saying, okay, you only have to read like every third line because they're like um, the cat, line one. The cat is yellow, line two. Line three, the yellow cat is on the basket or something like that. You know, so they build on each other. So it's like, if you read the third line, then you don't have to read the first two lines, but you're already reading the first two lines because it's all the same words, that sort of thing. Um, so anyways, we're, we're really liking it. We're moving really quickly through it, um, which I'm glad I have level three on hand because <laughs> If she's gonna be moving really quickly through it, then we're gonna need that pretty soon because she's on lesson 22 out of 57. So that feels quick to me. So I don't think it's gonna last too terribly long. We can do a lesson in a day. Sometimes we break it up between two days, especially if like one of, if it's a lesson where you're reading a whole story, um, just cause we have other stuff to do. Now, All About Reading is not the only thing we're doing because it's not a full curriculum. Um, when it comes to all of language arts, it's just reading, um, which is fine. We could do just reading because honestly, that's where her, weakness is, and we do classical conversations, so she gets a lot of the um, grammar memorization from that. Um, and she's not in Essentials yet, but she'll be in Essentials next year, so, you know, that's where they really focus on grammar and writing skills. But we also have this big old box of the rest of her language arts stuff. And it's not that we do this stuff every day. It's not that we even necessarily pull any of this out every week. It's that when we kind of need a break, we have a big box of resources to dive into. Now, we took a break between The Good and the Beautiful and Starting All About Reading, and we did just this box and kind of dove into it hard. So we had gotten... We, we do a lot of these Brain Quest books. Um, she really likes the summer ones because they're more themed. Um, but the ones that are the full year focus super ridiculous heavy on language arts. Like sometimes half the book will be language arts. Um, the math stuff is hilarious because it's so far behind what she's doing that she finds it kind of dumb. Um, so we usually finish the math stuff in like the first week of breaking into the book. And then we have to go back and do the language art stuff, which means the book lasts really long because she doesn't want to do those. 
Um, what I have been loving though is Memoria Press English Grammar Recitation. We have really, really loved this. Um, and if you know us, we don't write in the student for a lot of their guides. Um, we don't write in the student workbook. She totally could on this one. It would just, you know, it's not what I find important. So they have this little book, which works for English Grammar Recitation 1, 2, and 3. And it's just a reference guide for all of the grammar rules. So it goes into sentences, parts of speech, nouns, pronouns, adjectives and adverbs, verbs, um, sentences, verbs, questions, sentence um, components, finding the subject, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, modifying verbs, adverbs, modifying adjectives and other adverbs, conjunctions, phrases, nouns, pronouns, verbals, um, and it just keeps going. So it gives you all your capitalization rules and all that good stuff. So it's set up for you and your student just to go back and forth and what is a sentence? A sentence is a group of words expressing a complete thought. An example would be, Charlotte is a spider. What are two parts of every sentence? Two parts of every sentence are the subject and the predicate. What is a subject? A subject tells who or what sentence is about. It, if you recognize these, I make little videos on these because my daughter loves everything in song. And video format is great because I can turn on a YouTube playlist in the car and just let it go. And then like on the 15 minute drive, 20 minute drive, um, you know, to violin practice or to Hebrew lessons or something, now we got in our grammar for the day. <laughs> So love that. Um, we ditched the last like 15 pages of the spelling you see that we've been working on for the past like two years because it's just gotten so ridiculously easy. Um, but yet she also hated doing it. So we're not doing that. I do have in here, but we have not started spelling you see B which I get it, we're wildly behind when it comes to grade level because she's technically in third grade and she should be able to do all of this, but again, dyslexic, so I don't care. So spelling you see B, I'm hoping to get into pretty soon. Oh, and they come with erasable colored pencils, which she's actually excited about. Um, we also have, Evan Moore's Daily Reading Comprehension Grade 2. Again, don't care that it's behind a level. Um, we are not doing a ton of this. We haven't really broken into it much at all because it was a lot of reading and it was not a quick little warm up. It was like a pretty significant amount of reading for the day. So we're not doing it. Um, we've done a little bit of spectrum writing just because we don't do... A ton of writing. We do some creative writing prompts and I'll get into that in a second. But we've done a little bit of this just so she gets some of that structure stuff that we're not getting right now in All About Reading. Then we have this I actually really liked. This was um, daily language review for grade two. These are great, it's editing. So here's a sentence, what's wrong with it? How do you correct it? Um, you know, it, it's easy, it takes like five minutes or less. She can do it pretty much on her own. Although it's language art, so I kinda have, a, have to force her to do it, but she can. So that's great. Um, we are still in Explode the Code 4 because she has started giving us more pushback. We used to do Explode the Code on like a daily basis, but four is starting to get a little bit harder. So um, I, I kind of like it when we reach that level of competency. And like sometimes you have to start at the beginning, right? And just like power through and power through and power through. And then you hit the brakes when you reach your level of competency. And then it's like, okay, we're not doing this every day because this is like, getting too hard for us. And this is becoming like a cause of tears. So 
we've paused a little bit on this, especially since we're getting so much out of All About Reading um, with their phonics side. Um, so we might get back into this now that she's gained some confidence from that. But we've paused it a little bit. Then this was weird. We found this. Um, like someone left it behind at one of our rentals, I think. Um, so we found this and it's just like handwriting, a handwriting book. I'd never heard of this program before at all, but it's a cursive handwriting book and we've done a few pages out of it. Um, we are again doing Prima Latina. So we will probably continue doing Prima Latina um, every year until it sinks in. <laughs> We've done it, I, I think we're on like our second or third time through at this point. Um, and that's fine. You know, she doesn't need to be doing Latin yet. Thank you. <laughs> um, in s seriousness. Um, but she does Latin and classical conversations and she does Hebrew lessons. So to have something to do at home that is Latin, um, that gives you a little bit more of that structure and makes the classical conversations memory work make more sense, we had this. And it has a great CD and I really love that the pronunciation on the CD is so wildly different from the pronunciation we get in CC and in the CC CDs, which do not match because our community is very um, using like the Hindle pronunciation guide and the CC and the classical conversation CDs don't. And then this is slightly different. This lady actually has kind of a like, I would almost say like Texas accent. Um, so that's kind of funny. And it's really great. Like I really love her accent when it comes to hearing Latin because then you're realizing, oh, this is a you know, real language, people can speak it, and they're gonna have different accents. You're not gonna all, you know, pretend like, I don't know, I feel like Latin is almost spoken in like a, a British person doing an Italian accent. I don't know. <laughs> uh, daily word ladders. So these are for like grade one to two. These are dumb, but she actually really finds them very funny. So again, we found this somewhere and stole it. No, we didn't steal it, it was left behind. So this was abandoned and we took it and we've been really enjoying it because they're funny little jokes and it takes no time and she's done a thing. So it's busy work, yes, but it's fun busy work. So she likes it. Then, the last thing we have in the box is just um, ruled paper. And in this little notebook, we're doing a couple different things. So we've done little like paragraph writing things where we write out, okay, what's your topic sentence? What's your first detail, second detail, third detail, closing sentence? Um, so there's like another one on Egypt. Um, And then apparently she has used it for scratch paper, which she's not supposed to do. Um, but, and then she's done a couple like creative writing things where she's been given a picture and then told to you know, make a story about the picture. And we have to do those kind of together or else she just sits there and doesn't do anything. So she's like, okay, thank you for telling me the story. Now you actually have to put it on paper. So what's our first sentence gonna be? Well, our first sentence can be this giant long thing. Let's do a sentence you're actually gonna be willing to write. So we break that down. How about this? How about you say this? So that is our language arts box. And thank you for hanging out with me this morning and kind of going through some of this stuff. Sorry about the creepy Halloween light. 
and uh, I am like, I think in my last video I said, I'm trying to get back into this because um, I took a bit of a break. So as I try to get back into this, thank you for bearing with me while I'm probably a little bit stumbly because I'm a little bit out of practice. All right. Thanks so much. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.